is Ashford International. It's early March and we're travelling through East Kent in South East England by train, heading to Skylark's Garden, a private garden created by three charming people. So first I'd like to introduce you to my friend Ellie, her parents Gertie and Rex, and Safi the rescue cat. Their garden appeals to me for many reasons, and one is this. I have a wonderful recurring dream that I own a large garden with limitless planting possibilities. Then I wake up and I'm slightly disappointed to find it was all a fantasy. Well, Gertie and Rex turned this kind of fantasy into a reality when they purchased a portion of the farmland behind their house, instantly expanding their small garden into a huge space. And ultimately, the three of them have put in some very hard work and hundreds of seeds, bulbs and plants over the last 10 years or so to create a garden from scratch. Ellie, Gertie and Rex have not only invited us down to visit this March, but to follow the evolution of their garden through the coming seasons. If you would like to join us each time we visit Skylarks, please subscribe below. The original boundary of the garden ran just behind the pair of ornamental urns that you can see and along the bed of Rosa Ragosa. Everything you see beyond, down to the distant tree line, is part of the Skylark's expansion. This photo shows the original scene. Because it's such a contrast, isn't it, from where it, your boundary it, it was is, yeah. Yeah, originally. So has it evolved the way that you thought it would it was a collaboration with nature i love that that it was a collaboration with nature yeah. so you so didn't have a grand plan you just um just would see a plant that we fancied and thought oh i really want, we would really like to have that and then we had just have to find a place to put it or it might mean digging a whole new bed or trying to squeeze it in somewhere well, and then we just let pot. nature de de decide how it how it turned out I didn't realise at the time that there's no distinction between building land and garden land. Oh. So if they gave you permission to create a garden, they would in fact be giving you permission to build. And that went against the local plans. So we didn't get permission to produce a garden. Wow. So this is so actually a it's wildlife. It's agricultural land. So it, for us, it's, a, it's more of a wildlife garden than a... A formal, formal garden, garden. Yeah. and that's exactly what it is because mm. I've seen countless different types of birds since I've been here visiting yeah. the garden. Well, and it's, yes, it's much better. We, I wouldn't want a formal garden anyway, no. so that didn't actually bother us. And the meadow in the middle obviously brings a lot more sort of insects and things in the summer, and that's why we got bats um, one year, last year I think it was. Not just in your roof, but you've had a bat coming into your <laughs> sitting room. Coming into well. the sitting room as well, <laughs> yes, they leaked out into the rest of the house. Tell me about the, the point at which you decided to start creating the nature reserve. Well, that was before I moved back back here yeah so it was really Gertie who uh, <laughs> who did all the the in initial work which involved uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of and, <laughs> and Rex, and Rex. <laughs> uh, we got somebody in to take the topsoil off where we can have the meadow because it you know where it had been a field they'd fertilized it all the time And you're on clay, we should say, as well. well. It's a mixture. 
Oh, it's limestone. Clay. It's limestone all clay. clay. If you dig down far enough, it's clay. And there's London clay. We're all on London clay in this area. And you've put a drainage channel. That must have been quite an undertaking. That was the boss. Yes. Yeah. Um, down right down one side of the garden, and then across to near the pond, so that some of the water that's draining down from up the hill would be sort of diverted and, and wouldn't go all right the way across the meadow. The bank of things that, the, that that was always problematic, or what would or wouldn't grow in, in and around that. Well, the whole garden is a bit problematic yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's because it's so exposed yeah. and the, the clay soil, especially the back garden, the clay soil is, is completely uncultivated. And yeah. so it's, it's quite a hostile environment, in fact. We also had to put some mesh down over the paths so that you don't sink into the mud when it gets really wet. Yes. You can't see it no, no, today no, at all. Under, so it's still there, yeah, but, <laughs> but hidden. I'm the guy who did most, not all, of the big stones. I dug the, the pond. Uh, to, to get these. <laughs> big pond yeah, she as well. dug the pond out. I didn't even notice I was <laughs> heaving these massive things. And you've also got newts in, in one of the ponds, which yes, is fabulous. Uh, Dragonflies and damselflies over the pond. And uh, the toad Lots of made its home in that one, but you don't see it because it, most of the time is they're on land toads. In fact, so are frogs. Uh, and newts, they're not in, they, they come out and they're in the grass at the side. Newts don't stay in ponds all, all their life. I did accidentally fling a toad because I mistook it for a, a rotting apple. Oh, I was clearing them away and I went, come on, that, that apple's got legs. You <laughs> killed it, did you No, say? I didn't kill it, I flung it. Flung it? <laughs> Only a little way. Mm. Um, but I picked it up and put it back, and it was fine, and sort of hid it over. <laughs> but it does, it does. He might have enjoyed it. So it, might, <laughs> it does look like a apple. Some of the stones in, in the pond are not um, local. local or indigenous. We just got them from a garden centre. The garden centre was God. Their weight. <laughs> oh yes, you got it as a, as a, you you conned him. I did not con him. <laughs> she did. We we. we we said, well, we'll take those three big ones, uh, you know, and, and he said, right, and he was going to help put them in the back of my car. And she said, uh, well, are you go going to give us a, a sweetener? <laughs> well, I, well, <laughs> it was the biggest thing we could have seen. It's so big, you know. <laughs> it's yeah. I think that's great, but you're just you know, thinking of your budget and you want your money's worth. Uh, so. yes. Where are your favourite parts of the garden? I like it is all beautiful. of all of the garden, yeah. but I especially like the bits that that I didn't anticipate, that I didn't force into being. So, like the the sculptural shape of the pyracantha, which just grew there. I mean, I'm not even sure if you planted that, did you? This which pyracantha one? here. That one there. Yeah. Yes, I planted that. Well, well long done. Time, <laughs> because it. it it just surprises me and it just looks so beautiful and and, and, um, and in winter you can really appreciate the structure yeah, yeah. and when things self-seed of their own choice it's like a oh, it's like yeah. a gift isn't it yeah that you didn't you didn't put any effort into you didn't did, buy it did, just did. wants to be there Gertie where are your favorite parts of the garden or highlights I like places where you can just sit and watch things and not actually have to do any work <laughs> benches the benches, oh, yeah. You've got one that's on slightly elevated land, so it gives you a good view over the garden, and then you've got the one by the pond. Which is nice to sit there, and we could, we, we, you could watch all these newts and things. They come quite close to you if they don't, don't know you're there. I think a lot of gardeners we don't spend enough time just sitting and enjoying what's Absolutely there. Agree. Although Safi is basking here in the winter sunshine today, once the surrounding trees are in leaf, the swing seat transforms into a cool, shady oasis covered by a leafy canopy to retreat to in the heat of summer.
and in a secluded corner there's another restful seating area with glimpses of countryside through the boundary tree line. So what other animals visit the garden? You've got rabbits and you've got oh, rabbits. Yeah. They're living in your hedgehog wood pile yeah. at the bottom <laughs> of the garden. We yeah. have had hedgehogs, but um, they haven't got any visiting the house at the moment. Well, the we problem is, is because they've got the shed of this fence and hedgehogs like to be able to move quite away up to a kilometre in the night. Because yeah. they can go round, it's not completely they, enclosed. They can. So there is what area. we have got is foxes. At one time, we had eight baby foxes on here. If there's any signs of life in the pond, the heron will come. And You've got birds of prey as well, have oh, you? Yes. Oh yes, uh, Sparrow well, gets our birds occasionally, tries to. Uh, buzzards, of course, we get buzzards over. There's a lot of, um, I don't know if they're crows or rooks, or I don't know how to tell the difference, but there's lots of these large black birds um, living well, in the field behind. And obviously you get magpies and jays. Garden songbirds we get, and the collared doves. And pigeons. The pigeon lives under the akebia, it's got a nest under the akebia. Akebia favour rich soil, and Ellie explained that with its roots under the leaky composter, this plant is fed a constant supply of nourishment. Kingfisher, we've had a kingfisher. Oh, lovely. Yeah. Not lovely for your little mm. newts. Not but... <laughs> very often, but I mean, yeah, I have seen it. Oh. Plenty of mice, of course. But... Especially because we feed the birds, so there's bird food so, in, yeah, in the shed. So. So. Squirrels, we get squirrels. Oh, we have shrews as well. Oh. They're, yeah. they're adorable. You can just see yeah. them sort of scuttling along and you hear them squeak. <laughs> what um, was that, that bird? Black red start, I think it's called. We had a tree creeper well, on the apple trees, didn't we? Oh, we've had tree creepers oh. a lot. And, oh, you uh, get lots of little gorgeous little jenny wrens by the uh, wood pile. Talking of gorgeous things, your apple tree, again, it's like a sculpture, isn't it? Yeah, and isn't the bark it? is yeah. that, that, so unusual. Think, no, that um, was here when we came. Yeah. And it's, it's, a, it's an old tree. It was an orchard before the house was built. There's now a new generation of fruit trees planted at Skylarks and by including the autumn cherry as well as spring flowering apple and plum trees there's an extended pollen and nectar season to support bumblebees and other foraging pollinators. Fruiting trees with single or semi-double blossoms are best for bees to access nectar. And with your trees in the garden, all of those bar this old apple tree, they're all the trees that you've planted? No. 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 That, that whole fence along there, right up to the top of the, the hill, is self-planted. And we've deliberately um, sort of emphasised winter plants over summer plants so that it doesn't, so it doesn't have that sense of, oh, summer being just fantastic and then winter being really bland and miserable. We've tried to sort of even out the seasons a bit yeah. more so there's always something interesting. And that's taken a long time for it to get to that point. It was quite stark and bare in the early years. Hellebores look great. Yeah, I love them. They're my favourites now, I think. And that's your hellebore. That makes me happy that you've got. That makes me very happy. That's the other half of your hellebore. No, I
over time, Skylarks is becoming increasingly sustainable, with the self-seeded and planted trees drawing down carbon from the atmosphere, the meadow providing a great habitat for pollinators, home composting and multiple water butts, and these are very useful because Ellie has a fine collection of container plants, some requiring more water than others. Ellie proves it's easy to lose your marbles over plants. Has it been more work than you, yes, you anticipated? Yeah, yeah, well, I mean, I do love it. I do love it. It is just... I do feel a bit like it's we maybe bit off a bit more than we could chew just the amount of work and it just never seems to get any easier well, even though even though it's more mature now and but then you have to cut things back more because yeah. they're blocking the light to other things so it's just there's always something new that needs doing mowing the meadow it's all quite hard isn't it and hogweed yeah. you hate hogweed oh, with a there's, passion yeah. can't get rid of it no. Like it will regenerate, it's like the doctor, it will regenerate. <laughs> is there anything that you've got to accomplish? Is there something still that you feel you need to do? I feel Just... like I need to save some of the plants that aren't in the right place. Right. That I've done a bad job for putting them in the, in the you know, somewhere where they're, where they're too shaded and uh, I feel like I owe it to them to give them a chance somewhere sunnier. But other than that, it just needs a little bit more development, especially along the, the bank, the one bank there where the, where the rabbits have been digging up lots of holes. There are still lots of gaps there for, for new plants to go. So that's sort of incomplete. But the rest of the garden is start, starting to take form now. So. Apart from the meadow. Because there's too, much, too grass. much grass in it. And, and I've tried yellow rattle seeds, I've tried yellow rattle plug plants. They just don't take some reason, so they can't seem to get rid of the grass. But I, I think because there have been so many years of fertilising that ground, yeah. it is too fertile in fact yeah. still. Yeah, I think that's why the pond um, has so much blanket weed and sort of is a bit too exuberant. It's because there's just, there's just too much fertiliser and it gets seeps into it because it's at the bottom of the hill. The fertility doesn't always um, isn't always for the benefit of some plants. So, like the sedum and the crocuses, they grow too tall because they're overnourished. That they still look really charming, and mm. they do look quite nice this year. Looking at it now, it's well, wonderful absolutely, in the sunshine, how beautiful it is! It is. Yes, yeah, so I mean they? the garden. Sometimes it, it's the, it's almost like the whole garden is buzzing. There's yeah. so much buzzy little creatures. Wait till the summer really gets going, then you'll love it.